Hi, I'm Jordan. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two kiddos, a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and we have one more on the way, and we are a homeschool family. Every Monday, I release a day in the life video, and every Thursday, I release an additional video, usually about homeschool or the holidays. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my new novel study all about the book, A Wrinkle in Time. Before we get into it, please take a moment to like and subscribe. So for those of you who don't know, I used to be an English language arts teacher. I taught at the middle school level and the high school level. I've taught in public schools and charter schools. Uh, and then when we had our second baby, I decided to become a stay-at-home mom. And then we learned more about homeschooling and realized that that was really just the right path for us. Um, but of course, I still have my deep love of reading and writing. And I also have that teacher mentality of wanting to plan ahead. And so I had looked into kind of what was available out there for when my son and daughter eventually get a little bit older. And there were certain novels in particular that I really wanted to make sure that they read. Um, and I didn't just want to do a like plain reading of it. I wanted them to really engage with the book. Um, and there wasn't a lot of resources that I was finding um, for some of the books that I was looking at. So I decided I would make my own for them to have when they were older. <laughs> uh, and I just kind of came up with this idea that I would have all of the books that I really wanted them to do and I would create activities for them to do. Of course, after I did the first one, I really just kind of got a bug for it and was like, oh, this is definitely what I want to do. And I want to make sure that I'm making them available to other people as well. And so, I will link down below. You can see I have two other novel studies that I've already completed. One is for the best bad luck I ever had, and the other is for the book Crash. Those are both uh, books that I would consider for like a middle grade level. And then now my newest one is for the book A Wrinkle in Time. Now just as like a quick little sidebar, uh, always read through books before you assign them to your kiddos. That was something I had to do as a teacher too, just to make sure that it was appropriate and what I wanted my kiddos to be able to read. Same thing, um, if you are not familiar with this book and what it is about, I highly suggest reading it first before you give it to your kiddo and decide that this is something that you want them to read. I happen to really love this book and um, I've taught it several years back when I was a teacher in the classroom. And I know when my son gets a little bit older that he's really gonna love it too. This is a science fiction book about a girl named Meg whose father has been missing. He is a scientist, her mom is a scientist. She's got three other brothers and she doesn't feel like she fits in. She feels like she's really different. She has trouble in school. And ultimately it comes down to the things that make you different are they gonna help you be successful? So she has to kind of go on a journey with her younger brother and another boy to go rescue her dad from another planet where like evil is the the, the bad guy, <laughs> essentially. That is kind of like the nuts and bolts of it. My novel study is intended for like a sixth grade level. However, any um, more advanced upper elementary school kiddos would do fine with this book. I also think it wouldn't be hard to kind of beef up the d discussions and things with this to make it for uh, even higher. I've taught this book all the way up to, to ninth grade freshman high schoolers. So it is very flexible <laughs> in that, uh, but I will say that the novel guide that I made is intended for around the sixth grade, like, you know, 11-ish age range. <laughs> Use your own judgment on that, uh, but that is kind of like what I was thinking about. I'm gonna go ahead and flip through the novel study. It is the exact same format that my previous two novel studies have used, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a full flip through of everything that you would get if you were to purchase this novel study. And then that way you can make a really informed decision on whether or not you want to try this out for yourself. If you do decide that you want to purchase this one or one of the other two, I have linked down below my website where you can see from Homeschool Resources uh, the links to purchase this. And also I have links to freebie things that I have like um, 
little like simpler workbooks for much younger children for the Magic Treehouse that I've started making for my kiddo. And then my more simplified guides for where we're currently at with core knowledge, history, and science. But that's all linked down below in the description. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this novel study. So this is just the cover. And when you flip into it, you will see I have a letter here um, thanking you for purchasing the novel study and telling you about kind of my background. Over here, we then start with the how to use guide. I'm gonna go over everything that is in this how to in this video, but if you would like to just be able to quickly refer back instead of rewatching anything, it's all written out here for you. The things that are included in this guide is going to be 12 sections, one for each of the chapters of this book. And in each section, you're going to find vocabulary, predictions, chapter summaries, comprehension questions, and constructed response questions, along with two additional activities that you can use. And also the first and last section have anticipation guides. So this breaks down how to use the vocabulary, the predictions, chapter summaries, comprehension questions, constructed response, what I mean by additional activities, and then finally, the anticipation guide. So go ahead and opening this up, you'll see right from the very beginning, we have our first chapter, and it's we start us off with our vocabulary awareness chart. This is the chart that the kiddos would complete uh, for each of the chapters in the book. Um, I have pulled out five words for each chapter that could be more difficult. And the idea here is to kind of front load that vocabulary. You want to make sure that your kiddo isn't going to come up against a roadblock. This is just to help them with their comprehension as they're reading. This is something that they could refer back to, like a little reference. So before they get into it, they're going to read the word and they're gonna mark how well do they think that they know this word prior to reading the chapter. Is it totally unknown to them? Meaning they have no clue whatsoever what this word is. Heard it means that they have heard this word being used before, but they don't know what it means. Know it, this is where they feel like they know this word and could teach it means that they're so confident that they know this word, that they feel like they could explain it and teach this word to somebody else. Then there's a small space here for them to write a definition. Um, I really suggest that if your kiddo has never heard of this word, it's totally unknown to them, or if they've only heard this word before, that they definitely look up the dictionary definition. You would use whichever dictionary you feel the most comfortable with your kiddo using. Maybe you have a hard copy student dictionary that you like to use. Maybe you wanna use an online dictionary, whatever it might be, um, but having them look up those words. Now it's up to you whether you want them to also look up the definitions for the words that they know or could teach. Maybe you want them to double check their knowledge. Maybe you want them to come up with their own definition in their own words because you know that is also another way to double check that they know the definition. It's up to you how you wanna do it, whatever works best for your family. Then we get into the anticipation guide. The idea here is that there are five statements that have to do with ideas that are brought up within the novel. There are no right or wrong answers, it's just what you personally believe. Students will read the answer, so here we have being the same is equal, and they're gonna mark down whether they think that this statement is true or false. I think that this is a really great opportunity to have a discussion with your kiddo about why they feel the way that they do, um, what their thought process is behind this. If you're using this novel study with multiple kiddos, it could lead to a group discussion. Um, this is just a good way to get them thinking before the novel starts. Like I said, there is no right or wrong answer. It's, these are just blanket statements that they might feel one way about or the other. Then for this first chapter, they're going to make a prediction and it's going to be, what do you think this book is gonna be about? Just very basic. Um, the other predictions are much more um, specific to the chapter. And then it gives the direction to read chapter one. So chapter one is called Mrs. What's It? 
they'll read this chapter and then on the lines provided they'll summarize the chapter in one to two sentences this is where they write down just one to two sentence briefly describing what happened in this chapter to make sure that you know that they know what's going on Another way for you to know that they know what's going on are these comprehension questions. Each chapter has four comprehension questions, two short answers, and two that are multiple choice. And these are pretty cut and dry. Either they can find the answer directly in the text or they can't. Um, these don't require them to make any inferences. This is very explicitly stated. That is different from the race response. So this is where they would do a constructed response, which is a more fleshed out answer. And for this, we ask students to use the race strategy. So basically what this means is for this paragraph long answer, they are going to restate the question, answer the question, cite the source and explain their response. So what I mean by that is if I were to say, what color is the sky as my question to restate the question would mean to kind of answer it in a complete sentence you start with the color of the sky is before you give your answer citing the source this is just where you're giving examples or details from the text that support why you think the answer is what you think it is and then explaining how did that example explain that you were right these questions are going to be more inferential, meaning that yes, there are going to be, uh, yes, there is a right answer, but you're going to have to use clues from the text to come up with that answer. It's not necessarily going to be just written out explicitly in the text. After your race response, then you have your two activities uh, that come with your chapter. These are different for each of the chapters. Um, for example, though, for the first chapter here, I have a steel chart. This is like a characterization chart to help the kids with our main character, Meg, and um, being able to get details about who she is and characterize her. And then on this side, your option is to create a comic strip illustrating a scene from this chapter. And then the pattern repeats, except once we get into chapter two, we no longer have the anticipation guide. That doesn't get revisited until the end. So we have our vocabulary awareness chart, our prediction that is specific to what we read in the previous chapter, where we read our summary, our four comprehension questions, our constructed response, and then our two activities. Do you have to do all of this? Absolutely not, but that is an option for you. You can decide what works best for your family. Do you want your kids to maybe pick just one of the activities? Maybe you don't want them to do the writing constructed response every single time. Maybe you want to lessen the vocabulary. Maybe they only do the words they don't know. It's really up to you. It's meant to be flexible so that you can use it however you want but hopefully there is enough here that everything that you might want for a novel guide or novel study is here for you. Then, like I said, we come back to the anticipation guide at the end of the final chapter. For this, it is the exact same five st statements. We are just trying to see, did you change your mind? Did something that you read in this novel m make you go from saying that the thing was true to false or false to true? And this is another great opportunity to come back and discuss to see like, did your opinions change on anything? Why or why not? Then we just finish out our activities and then you're provided with an answer key for each of the comprehension questions um, that they did for each of the chapters. So that is the novel study guide that I have created for the novel A Wrinkle in Time. As I said, this is intended for like a middle school kind of level. Specifically, I was kind of thinking sixth grade, but 
you could change it depending on what works for you and your family. You know where your kiddo is at. You also know what you're comfortable with them reading. So take a look at the novel first before you make a decision, before you make up your mind on that. Uh, but hopefully this is something that could help you guys and um, what you are doing for English language arts this year. And if you have any suggestions for any books that you would like a novel study guide for in the future, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. I know there are several that I'm planning on doing uh, specifically because of what I was thinking about for my own kiddo, but I am very much open to suggestions. So <laughs> please let me know. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos from me, subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.